What Tesla just announced is not your average corporate announcement. Picture this, a supercomputer with a processing power of 100,000 NVIDIA H100 chips built in just 122 days. That's Tesla's new Colossus, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. Now, what does it mean for investors like you? Well, my trusted golden retriever Winston has sniffed out some research that suggests we're on the cusp of a $1 trillion annual profit potential. Now, you might be wondering how Tesla plans to harness this computing giant from the Grok AI that could revolutionize autonomous driving to Optimus robots that could redefine manufacturing, the implications are more than staggering. But more importantly, Tesla's unique access to real-time data from millions of vehicles gives them an unprecedented advantage in the AI race. I'm about to dive deep into these groundbreaking developments and explain how they could impact your investment strategy. And speaking of surprising developments, our teaching portfolio is up an 80% increase this year alone. And I actually don't think that was surprising. If you're intrigued by that, maybe you're dubious about it even, then come and join our free beginner trading training next week. Learn how we do it. FelixFrancelog slash webinar. Grab your free spot. That's all you got to do. Well, and you got to show up. But first, let's delve into the heart of Tesla's AI revolution, the XAI Colossus supercomputer. Imagine a machine with a processing power of 100,000 superhuman brains working in perfect harmony. That's Colossus for you, built with 100,000 NVIDIA H1 processors. But what truly sets Colossus apart isn't just its raw power, it's the breakneck speed at which it was constructed. From, from blueprint to reality in just 122 days. Like building the Empire State Building in less than a week. This rapid deployment showcases Tesla's agility in what is now the cutthroat world of AI development. To put Colossus's capabilities into perspective, let's compare it to its closest rival. The system used to train OpenAI's chat GPT-4. While exact figures are closely guarded secrets, industry experts estimate GPT-4 was trained on a system with around 20 to 30,000 GPUs. Colossus, with its 100,000 GPUs, potentially offers over three times that computing power. But Elon Musk isn't stopping there. He's already planning to double Colossus's compute capacity in the coming months. It's like upgrading from a sports car to a rocket ship mid-race. Now, you might be wondering, why does this matter? Well, in AI development, computing power is king. Musk himself compares it to the horsepower of the engine. More horsepower means faster training, more complex models, and potentially breakthrough innovations. This massive computing power is being harnessed to train XAI's large language model Grok. The current version, Grok 2, is already turning heads in the AI community, but it's Grok 3, slated for release this December, that has insiders buzzing. Musk boldly claims it should be the most powerful AI in the world at that point. The implications for Tesla are profound. Imagine this level of AI capability integrated into Tesla's autonomous driving systems or powering the Optimus humanoid robot project. We're talking about potential leaps in technology that could redefine and destroy entire industries. But of course, the real test will be in the results that Colossus produces and how quickly Tesla can translate those into marketable innovations. So let's turn our attention to the brains behind the Braun Grok AI. Picture, if you will, an AI system that's not just smart, but it's cheeky. It's very cheeky. That's Grok. And it's named after a term from science fiction, meaning to understand something thoroughly and intuitively. The current version, Grok 2, is already pretty impressive. Try it. Just go to x.com and play with it. It's like having a virtual assistant with the knowledge of a library and the wit of kind of a British comedian from the 80s. But Grok 3 is what Winston and I are particularly excited about. Elon, in his typical understated fashion, says Grok 3 will be the most powerful AI in the world. Now, we've heard grand claims before, but the firepower of Colossus actually makes me believe that he's probably on time this time. So what does it mean for Tesla? 
and of you as an investor. Well, Grok, or this AI Colossus, could take real-time data from millions of Tesla vehicles and make split-second decisions with the wisdom of a seasoned driver and the reflexes of a Formula One champion. Or consider the potential impact on Tesla's energy business. It could optimize power groups with unprecedented efficiency, balance supply and demand like nobody else has ever done before. But the real game changer, what I'm most excited about, is integrating Grok with Tesla's Optimus robot. Imagine a workforce of robots with the problem-solving skills of a human and the precision of a machine. So you're going to have an army of super-efficient, never-tiring workers without the need for coffee breaks or holiday pay. I think Starbucks stock might be in trouble if I think that one through. With that said, let's shift gears and talk about something that's as crucial to AI as petrol is to a classic gas guzzler. Tesla, as many of you know, sits on a gold mine of data. Every single Tesla on the road is essentially a rolling data collection machine. We're talking about real-time video feeds from millions of cars, capturing every twist and turn, every pedestrian movement, every road sign, and every unexpected obstacle. But if you listen to Elon Musk's last interview with Lex Frieden, where he talks about the problem with cars, they can't get everywhere. They can't go upstairs. They can't go into buildings. They can't go into shops. Well, robots can and robots will. And once the robots are set loose, not just on factory floors and warehouses, but as assistants in the home, like emptying your dishwasher, cleaning the floor, taking your dog for a walk. I actually don't think that's a good idea. I think dogs like human company, like real life company, but it's probably better than him sitting at home. They will then get to experience every object, right? Every remote control, every mouse, they will see it. They have the data on it. They'll know the design of the cup. They'll know who made it. They'll know all the things that kind of make the world real. And that data collection exercise, as Elon says, is going to be something no one's ever done before. That's what's going to give you an unprecedented edge into developing and creating products and services that people haven't even thought of yet. And at this point, I don't see anyone else competing with that at the scale and speed at which Tesla is likely to develop this. Now, there are, of course, big ifs and buts in there. You know, we don't know if the robots will work and all of that. But I think if anybody can make them work, then Tesla is likely to be the one that actually rolls them out at great speed. And all of that data collected by robots, you'd be able to feed it back to cars because cars are just robots with wheels. And you will create this integrated, insane ecosystem that just works for you, makes your life better, right? And I know most people don't have household staff anymore. I'm very fortunate to have it. It makes your life so much better to have lovely people around you who work. And I probably prefer people over robots, but I can imagine there are a lot of tasks that are very monotonous and repetitive and stuff where a robot would actually be very, very good. Plus, it's going to be a lot more affordable and therefore most people will be able to get a robot. So the American middle class is going to have one robot in the house. Mark my words. So in essence, Tesla isn't just building cars. They're now creating a global network of data collectors that feed directly into the AI development. And it's a virtual circle. The more cars and robots on the road and in the real world mean more data, which leads to better AI, which in turn makes the cars and robots better to and more attractive to buyers. And that leads us to our newest Tesla tech, right? You seen that actually smart summon thing, uh, which basically means the car comes to you. You can call it from your phone. And it's the beginning, the glimpse into the future where cars are genuinely autonomous and they go and collect things. They pick your children up from school. They drop stuff off. They are essentially a robot. Now, all, of course, it really needs is to put a robot into the robot car so that it can actually go about and do your grocery shopping and everything else. But this is already real tech. You walk out of the supermarket with all your groceries, you press a button on your phone, and the Tesla, wherever you parked it, will come to you like an obedient golden retriever. Winston isn't actually that obedient, but he's very sweet. And in the future, 
a little robot will come out of the passenger seat. And yes, he's not the one driving, <laughs> car drives itself. And he's going to take your bags, he's going to put them in the boot, and you're going to get in the back seat and you're going to get driven home. That is the future. And that's basically what we're starting to see here right now. And I know a lot of people are skeptical about autonomous cars and vehicles. It'll take years to get the permits out there. Well, Waymo's got the per permits. They're driving around. So why shouldn't Tesla? If, you are, if Tesla's ASS, as it's unfortunately called, is permitted, the thing that the car comes to you, well, why would we not be allowed to extend that, right? And I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen much faster than we think. So from an investment perspective, this AI project, and the Optimus project could be a game changer. Remember that trillion dollar annual profit potential we mentioned earlier? A significant chunk of that could come from Optimus. It's like Tesla is building not just a new product, but an entirely new industry that will serve and replace industries. So if we connect all the dots of all this news and we see the grand tapestry that Tesla is weaving, they're conducting a global research project with every Tesla vehicle in future Optimus robot serving as a field research. So but let's break it down one more time. On the one side, we have millions of Tesla vehicles on the road, each equipped with eight cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors and forward facing radar. So they are basically mobile data collection units. Every mile driven, every turn taken, every obstacle avoided, the data feeds into Tesla's AI system. Add to that the potential of the Optimus robot. Elon envisions hundreds of millions, potentially even billions of these robots learning from real world interactions. It's like having an army of interns, but ones that never sleep, never take coffee breaks and can work in environments too dangerous for humans. The scale of this data collection strategy is staggering. It's akin to having eyes and ears in every corner of the globe, constantly feeding information back to a central brain. And that brain, my friends, is the Colossus supercomputer we discussed earlier. And let's not forget what's unique about this approach. This isn't just about quantity of data. It's about diversity in real world applicability. Tesla's AI isn't learning in a simulated environment. It's learning from actual roads, actual human behavior, actual real world scenarios. It's the difference between learning a language from a textbook and living in a country where it's spoken. And this strategy gives Tesla a unique advantage in the AI race. While other companies might have powerful computers and clever algorithms, Tesla has a direct line to real world data on an unprecedented scale. However, it does raise a concern, doesn't it? Privacy. It's a significant issue here. Should it be permitted that one company has all this data? What if every mine in the world was operated by Tesla robots? Of course, there'd be competition, so it won't just be one company, but there'd be massive, massive amounts of information, sensitive information that'll flow back to Tesla's supercomputers. So there's going to have to be a solution here on how that's handled. And that is going to be an opportunity for another industry, which will be data protection on steroids, a little bit like what Palantir already does, uh, but probably on a much, much grander scale. Because there's the question of how is this data used beyond improving Tesla's products? Could it be used for urban planning, traffic management, energy grid optimization? All those possibilities are positive and useful, but of course it could also be used to, well, create a competing business that knows everything about every other business out there and destroys them, right? So from an investor's perspective, this data strategy could be Tesla's real secret weapon. It's not just about making better cars or robots, it's about creating an AI ecosystem with a depth and breadth of the real world understanding that could be applied across pretty much anything out there in real world applicability. Tesla's AI isn't learning in a simulated environment. It's learning from actual roads, actual human behavior, actual real world scenarios. It's the difference between learning a language from a textbook and living in a country where it's spoken. And this strategy gives Tesla a unique advantage in the AI race. While other companies might have powerful computers and clever algorithms, Tesla has a direct line to real world data on an unprecedented scale. However, it does raise a concern, doesn't it? Privacy. It's a significant issue here. Should it be permitted that one company has all this data? What if every mine in the world was operated by Tesla robots? Of 
course, there'd be competition, so it won't just be one company, but there'd be massive, massive amounts of information, sensitive information that'll flow back to Tesla's supercomputers. So there's going to have to be a solution here on how that's handled. And that is going to be an opportunity for another industry, which will be data protection on steroids. A little bit like what Palantir already does, uh, but probably on a much, much grander scale. Because there's the question of how is this data used beyond improving Tesla's products? Could it be used for urban planning, traffic management, energy grid optimization? All those possibilities are positive and useful, but of course it could also be used to, well, create a competing business that knows everything about every other business out there and destroys them, right? So from an investor's perspective, this data strategy could be Tesla's real secret weapon. It's not just about making better cars or robots, it's about creating an AI ecosystem with a depth and breadth of the real world understanding that could be applied across pretty much anything out there. And the potential revenue streams from AI and robotics could make Tesla's current car sales look like pocket change. We're talking about a company that could potentially dominate multiple industries simultaneously. First, the autonomous driving. With the data advantage we discussed earlier, Tesla looks like they're leapfrogging the competition in self-driving. And that means they're going to get a huge amount of the revenue that's going to be coming from autonomous driving. Then we've got the energy sector, where Tesla's AI could optimize power grids. We've got these super intelligent conductors essentially controlling the energy grid. And then we have Optimus itself, the robot, which could redefine manufacturing, healthcare, space explorations. Why send people when you can better send robots? And it could also be the maid that everybody's always dreamt of. Now, you might say the public will never accept it. The question is, of course, a real one. Will people be ready to trust their lives to self-driving cars or work alongside humanoid robots? It's one thing to use an Alexa smart speaker. It's quite another to have a robot babysit your children. And I think it will be a slippery slope where people will initially say, OK, yes, you can carry the boxes, you can go down the mine. Um, and then bit by bit, we'll see how good they are at these things that carry your groceries. They'll start to drive your children to work and so on. And people will build up more confidence. And it won't happen overnight. And there'll be some people who will say, I'll never let those bloody robots near me. And, and that's the same thing that people said when electricity came around. They didn't want to give up the candles. They didn't want to give up the horses when cars were invented and so on. And that's always a, a small percentage. So you're going to see, in my opinion, a very wide adoption because businesses will love it. It'll be cheaper. If you have, ask a housewife. She would like somebody to do the washing, the washing up, the dishwasher, the mopping, the cleaning, the ironing, and any of those things. Yes, will be the answer. And they won't really care whether it's a robot doing it or a human being doing it. So as long as they are reasonably affordable, then they will get massive adoption, just like the vacuum did in the 1950s. So keep your eyes on Tesla, my friend. I think the future is being written literally before, before our very eyes. And it promises to be insanely exciting. And I'm very, very excited to be on this journey. And we look forward to the Robo Taxi event, of course, in uh, 10th of October. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Sometimes these events are exciting and amazing for the stock price. And sometimes it's sort of a buy the rumor, sell the news type thing. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But at the moment, I don't see any company out there doing quite as many exciting things as what I'm seeing in Tesla. Let me know what you make of it in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend or a robot. See you on the next one. The institutional sharks are circling Palantir and you might be swimming in dangerous waters without even realizing it. Felix here and today we're diving deep into the turbulent seas of Palantir stock. As we approach the potential S&P inclusion on September 20th, the waters are getting increasingly choppy. We've seen 